What's up guys, so today I'm going to go over the weekly outlook of what I expect for the market to go to happen for the week of starting on the third, uh, Tuesday, September 3rd. So we do have a short week this week starting on Tuesday instead of Monday. Monday is Labor Day for the U.S. markets. So we'll go on over news first, what we have for news. Um, not too much news for the week, I don't think. So PMI on Tuesday, Wednesday there is some mortgage loans, balance of trades, exports, fantasy orchard. There's nothing on Wednesday that's really of significance. Thursday jobless claims. This has been a big thing that we've been looking at is jobless claims lately, so that can make a pretty decent move. And then Friday being NFP. Um, non-farm payroll so those are kind of Thursday and Friday are going to be the big days for the market this week so now let's let's go into our trend journal which we go over every single week move my head so we are 13 days into our uptrend that we started on um, August 13th so we are still in an uptrend we kind of have had that pullback slash consolidation that I've talked about over the last few weeks where I said we've had a run up. Now I want to see a consolidation. I want to see more of a pullback and then see strength after that. And that's what we've just what we've kind of seen over the last uh, week now. And so we have had some down moves, but no real no fair value gaps created on a daily chart and no real displacement to that downside. So that's really positive feedback. And then when we add in our moving averages and our volume here, you can see one day we barely closed under the 21 EMA, but it wasn't enough for me to say, hey, we're going to change the trend at all. The next day, immediately we bounced back and closed above the 21 EMA. So we are still in our trend, having a successful retest of our moving average here. Inside this fair value gap on a daily, we've only came into there and held this fair value gap on the daily and also this fair value gap on a weekly so where everything's looking fine everything's looking nice as of right now we don't have we do have september seasonality coming up which is historically bearish but i'm not even worried about that as of right now until we start seeing some price action really showing it so yes we do have seasonality but you don't worry about seasonality until price confirms it and you can see as we are kind of declining we are getting declining volume on these declines declining days and then a high volume on this kind of reversal style day here and now we've created a swing low on the daily chart so i'd like to see a push up on in the next few days to at least come back up to this high from Thursday the 22nd. So that would be about 2026 here. So let's go break it down into a lower time frame and check it out as well. So we're gonna take off the 21 EMA because I only use that in a daily chart. And we are holding this 200 EMA on the four hour chart, which is kind of the line in the sand that we like to see. Every time we're above it, we're above, we're in longs and we're looking to go we're looking strong every time we're below it we're looking weaker as of right here you can see so we came into this fair value gap on the four hour which was the weekly and the daily fair value gap as well held that and then created a fair value gap on the four hour as well a new one in this price section which we are holding also and kind of delivering from there multiple times so we are still showing strength we're respecting bullish order flow Bare minimum, there's a nice set of equal highs here, right at 19,690. If we can get a good push above that level and get some displacement above that level, then we'll look to come at least back up to this high 2028 20, here. And that's how I'm going to be, that's where I'm looking at in the NASDAQ right now. The ES, the S&P 500 is stronger asset as right now you can see it hasn't had as much of a dip it didn't even come down into this fair value gap and it is very very close to its all-time highs already it didn't create nearly as much of a pullback over this last week as the nasdaq did which that's perfectly fine that's just showing strength outside of the tech sector and so same thing we have delivered from this fair value gap on the weekly and daily and then this four hour fair value gap as well we have a very clean set of equal eyes right here which we are pretty much at which we want to see a good displacement above there 
and then we'll look to get hit all-time highs. There's not really a lot of room between here and all-time highs right now. So the S&P is fairly strong and a lot stronger than the NASDAQ as of right now. Gold, we have seen just kind of a consolidation week, which was which is good for the asset. It was a downside reversal, so we want to see it kind of hold this whole breakout section, this 2024, in order to continue bullish. We did not have, we don't have a crazy good push outside of this whole range that we created. So I want to, so if we do come in, I want to see this fair value gap get held. And if it does not, then we could see it start coming back down to this 20, 2068 level, 2468 level on gold or 69. So that's what I'm looking for for gold. I think that if we do hold this level, this fair value gap on the daily chart, then we could see a push back up to these highs here. This 2064. Until we get outside of one of these levels, then we are just truly range bound. Let's go into DXY. We're going to do it without moving averages the first start. And then I'm going to add in the moving average also to kind of show an extra confluence. We have this range that we have been holding in the NASDAQ since really 2022 now. It's been on this bottom half of the range. We've had this uh, $99 to $100 level has been kind of a bounce point that we've seen. And then on the top half, we've seen this 107-ish, 106 to 107 BA bounce and BA rejection point. So we are kind of in this really but the bottom half of the range. And so if we bounce above and invert this fair value gap, then we could essentially guess to go to the upper portion of the range, at least to this second fair value gap here, or even take out some of these highs up there at 104. If we hold this fair value gap that we just created on the fair on the weekly chart and push back down to the downside, then we could see lower prices to break down and finally get outside of this range that we've been holding for the last two years. So now I'm going to add on some moving averages to show a little extra confluence. Right now we are below the weekly moving average. When you see that we add this moving average here, this 200 day moving average, we have bounced off of it, bounced off of it, bounced off of it multiple, multiple times going back since 2022. And now we are actually starting to reject and we are we have displacement below and we're going to see if we are going to hold below this moving average or if we're going to bounce back above it. So if you can see here, last time we held below the moving average, we've seen a continuous push to the downside. Same with here. We kind of came in and out and then eventually we had a push to the downside. And then if we come back to 2010, break down from the moving average, test back up, and then push to the downside. So we're seeing this constant push once we get below this 200 EMA, and I talked about this last week as well. Once you get below the 200 EMA and hold, then you see a downside move in the DXY, which in turn brings more likely an upside move in the NASDAQ and in the indices. So I'd like to see this fair value gap hold, if not, it's going to come up to this top fair value gap possibly. And then I'd like to see a rejection from there and get a good push down to the downside to kind of confirm if we are going to break below this whole structure right now. What it is, if we get rid of any of this, this is all just internal structure in between this high and this low. This high has never been breaking. This low has never been broken either. So everything until we break one of these levels is really just noise. And until we break one of these levels, it's going to be just noise and going to be range bound. So next we'll go to the Euro. It's the exact same range. If you look at the that same range I showed on the DXY, we're just range bound in between these two levels. It did not create a fair value gap on its weekly chart on the last on the last week. And kind of had a downside move all week. Not on heavy volume at all though. So if we are to continue to the upside. We are inside a daily chart. Fair value gap. So if we start reversing here. See an upside reversal on the daily chart. And start inverting fair value gaps. Then we could at least see 
I move back up to here, this uh, 1.0, 1 1.111. And then if we invert this fair value gap, look to come back up to the highs on the euro. We could, if we fail this fair value gap that we're in here on the daily, which would be this one on the four hour, then we could come back to this 200 EMA on the four hour as well, which has been a mean reversion point. Then next for last one for currencies is DXY. We did, it did actually get a, a fair value gap that it created within the last two weeks. So right here is a fair value gap, which we want to see that hold. That fair value gap took out a previous high. So if we come back inside this fair value gap, we want to see it hold. And then we could look to see it come back even into this volume imbalance right at 1, 1.3406. So again, same thing we are, if we came down a little lower and came into one of these fair value gaps on the daily chart, which is also a weekly fair value gap, somewhere one of these guys, and probably a good four hour fair value gaps. Yep, four hour ones right there. Then if we come back into that level and have a good bounce from there and start inverting fair value gaps, then we'll look to come back to the highs on GBP. Last, I want to talk about the SMH, which is the semiconductor ETF. This is usually one of the leaders of the market. And so when we see this build strength, then we see tend to see the NASDAQ build strength with it. And so it is holding its 21 EMA just like the NASDAQ. It got rejected from its 50 day moving average, just like the NASDAQ. So once we if we can get some strength above this um, 245 level here, which is that same level in NASDAQ where we're looking to get above these previous weak highs, essentially. If we can get some strength above that, then we'll look to come to this high from Thursday the 20, uh, 22nd. And then once, if we can get above and hold above this 50 day moving average, which I'm gonna change it colors, they're both purple right now. The 50 day I usually have as a orange or yellow marker. If we can get above, <coughs> excuse me, get above this 50 day and hold and hold a low of the day above the 50 day with NASDAQ with um, the SMH, then we'll be looking a lot stronger and looking to at least come to this gap fill at 272 here. So that's what I got for the week. Still looking pretty good regardless of seasonality. Everything is still looking fine. Bullishness still looks fine. And it looks like we're going to continue to the upside here. Thank you guys for watching. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.